We've had a couple of Sony C6 Mark IIs on the channel, but we haven't had a Sony C6 Mark I. Let's crack on. Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beats Bite video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at a Sony C6 Mark One. So um, we've had a couple of Mark IIs on the channel. Um, they're always that sort of really dark, um, sort of charcoal-y, browny sort of colour, black-ish, charcoal, I don't know what you'd call it, let me know in the comments what you'd call this uh, colour. Um, and the, the buttons are quite different as well. Um, for the tape transport um, especially and um, but fundamentally they are the same machine they came out about the same time um, I do think maybe the mark one was more to suit and go with um, the older style of Sony TVs and the mark two was more to go with the newer sort of black cabinets um, um, style of sets that were starting to appear about that sort of time I seem to remember um, I don't know that's just my theory but um, yeah it's one of the last machines on my sort of if you like bucket list that uh, I wanted to look at on the channel um, I've pretty much looked at everything that I wanted to look at and a lot, a lot more besides um, I think we've got one more Sony that I wanted to, to look at I think it's HF150 I've got one of those, so that'll be coming up. Look forward to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so let's give this a test. Um, I'm pretty confident I know what the problem's going to be um, from what the seller um, has described. Um, but, yeah, let's give it a test. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to do this over two um, parts. Uh, I wanted to do a deck appraisal before I decided how many parts is going to be in because if the heads were bad, um, we do a third part um, replacing those. Um, but uh, well, we'll see. Um, it doesn't look too bad. There is wear on the upper drum, um, so we'll address that more than likely in part two. Um, but um, belts wise, everything looks pretty good. Um, I do have a complete belt kit um, from Star Electronics in um, Australia. I've also got all my um, capacitors ready to go to replace the servo caps because um, I'll need doing. And um, I've also got a couple of genuine new old stock uh, idler wheels. Um, I mean, the, the kit does come with a tyre, but I just think, well, make it look pretty <laughs> I may well may as well just um, put a, a, a new uh, a complete new idler on so uh, we'll get that done so let's power it on again and uh, give it a test okay so I'm gonna plug it in I have already checked the plug so I'm not gonna do a plug check but um, see this this machine has been in the damp a little bit and uh, that's quite evident by the plug uh, it does have a 13 amp fuse in it. I uh, do actually have some more um, mains plugs on the way, so um, that's all good. Let's give it a second to start. Lovely. Um, so let's try a cassette. Oh, lovely and smooth. That's a bit noisy, but that's fine. We'll sort that. Um, wind is good it's actually really not a bad machine oh, I can already hear what the problem is so yeah it's um it's not great I mean obviously we've got the servo issue but the other thing that's really concerning me is it looks like we've got a, a problem with the heads um, so if I press pause, you can see we've got a lot of snow, um, which suggests to me that one of the head chips is clogged. 
Um, I just hope somebody didn't try and clean this with a cotton wool bird um, to try and fix the servo problem. <laughs> it, it happens, um, and I've seen it a lot. Um, it doesn't seem to happen quite so much these days, to be honest, but um, still, you know. Um, Take-up's also a bit shaky, um, but it's there, which is cool. Um, but the machine itself, I mean, it, it's pretty pretty genuine. Um, like I said, I think it's been in the damp, um, maybe condensation, maybe? Um, just causing it to be a bit rusty in places. But uh, yeah, it's it's actually a really clean machine, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, so I suppose we ought to try it and clean these heads. So let's clean the heads. So um, isopropyl um, dosed piece of paper. It's fairly mucky, but I just have a feeling. What's the head chip look like? It looks okay. Just <laughs> sort of scrubbing the heads, which is not good. I can feel them. They have good protrusions, so yeah, okay, well, let's give it a go. Okay, so let's try it again. Uh, should be dry enough, it's warm enough. I do wonder if the heads might be, or one of the chips is actually bad. Okay, so there might be a part three after all. We'll see. We'll see if these heads actually do um, sort themselves out, clean up. Oh, they are doing the very same. They are cleaning up. Okay, so let's eject that. Um, worry, worry about the heads once you get the servo sorted. Um, I do have some heads uh, if we need them, but I think those heads may well be okay. So, uh, yeah, let's get the bottom off and uh, have a look at those caps. Okay, so the bottom cover's off. Um, what immediately strikes me is these screws are missing and this plastic, uh, which should be black, uh, black standoff, is missing as well. So somebody's been in here. It doesn't look like um, any soldering's gone on, um, but it might mean that maybe somebody's been fiddling with adjustments. Um, but uh, what's interesting as well is it doesn't have the arrows pointing to where the screws go in, um, although you can see clear evidence where they do go in. Um, but yeah, they just don't have these, these arrows. Um, I've seen this on one or two machines where it just wasn't on the print. Um, which is interesting. So, looking at it, um, let's just unplug this extra board and just put the bonnet stay up. Um, so, looking at the Sanyo caps, the light blue ones, um, same as always. Um, so, this one, this one, this one. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, that should do it. Um, I 
think there might be, yeah, there's one up here as well. And I don't know whether there's, yeah, there's one behind the bonnet stay that is my screwdriver. So, uh, yeah, we'll get those changed and uh, we'll take it from there. So what I'll do is I'll um, show each cap and the um, position of it. And then I'll show each replacement cap. And then we'll take it from there to see how uh, good or bad this machine is. C18. One microfarad at 16 volts. C16. 0.47 at 16 volts. C50, which is another 0.47 at 16 volts. And C46, which is a 0.1 at 16 volts. C60 and C63, uh, uh, both 0.47 and both 16 volts. C61, uh, another 16 volt, 0.68. C58, uh, it's a 0.1 microfarad at 16 volts. C54, which is a 1 microfarad at 16 volts. And we also have C7. Um, not sure that's actually the right value, but um, that one I think also used to be a Sanyo cap. Let's crack on. Okay, so we're all done. Uh, all the capacitors are in. This one, um, 224, so it's 220,000 picofarads, uh, four zeros, um, 220 nanofarads, or 0.22 microfarads. So that is correct, actually, because I was thinking, I'm, I'm sure there's another sort of slightly odd value, um, 0.68 being the other one, um, that always sort of, sort of stands out to me. So, um, yeah, let's plug this in. Um, obviously somebody was in here and um, obviously found that cap bad, changed it, fixed it there and then, and then didn't put the screws in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it back together on the bottom end and uh, give it a try. Okay, so I've put some screws in. I haven't found one of these yet. I probably will do in the course of time. But just wondering, does anybody know what this is for um it feels to me like it's some sort of like loop um recording type thing um like for cctv of the time uh, or just to constantly record or play back uh in loop um but i don't know it's um it's always interested me to know or intrigued me to know what that is actually for um, let me know in the comments, um, any ideas or if you know. Okay, so let's power it on. Super. And put my cassette and see what happens. It's still quite noisy. Well, we have good servo lock, but we do still have this head issue, and I do just wonder on that. Um, what's going on with that? And whether we do have maybe a bad head disc. No, I think it's just the one head. Um, 
one head chip is either damaged or clogged. Video signal and chroma one I think is okay. I think it's the other one. Yeah, you can sort of see, I mean if I press pause, you can just see that it's just yeah, a bad head. Um, okay, so this is probably gonna be a three parter. Exciting. Um so part two. Um to be fair, part two is gonna be um changing the heads, I think. Um and um That's interesting. Yeah, I think that's literally the, um, because it's wobbling about, I think it's the copy box that's actually making it seem like it's fine. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it is cleaning up. Well, that's not great, is it? Yeah, it does feel like the heads may be hunting about. Yeah, I think it's a copy box. The copy box is making it um, that it's uh, okay. I think what I'll do, I'm gonna just put it over onto the um, onto the scars direct into the set, um, and I'll just show you the the TV. So I'll just do that now. Okay, well, after a bit of a fiddle, I've managed to get it on the the TV, and yeah, it's. It's just composite in and well it does clear itself up it's almost like I'm I have some sort of video fault with it as well um, I don't know I, I just I'm just not sure so I think yeah part two We'll have a look at um, whether it is the heads. Uh, we'll measure, measure the um, video head output preamp. See what's going on. See if it is actually bad heads. And then take it from there. So, um, yeah, I hope you like this one. Um, at least we've got nice solid servos now. Uh, uh, relatively anyway. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see if it is bad heads or it's a bad um, a bad preamp or somewhere else in the signal path so uh, yeah with that thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe as one well click that notification bell so you know when the next one's coming don't worry we've got lots to come as well it's not all going to be just this over the next few weeks um, so uh, yeah See you in another video. Bye for now.